This is Twit. I want to say this came out of nowhere, but ultimately it actually makes a whole lot of sense. And I wondered, I wondered not if, but when Google was going to do this. Yesterday, it was Tango. The Asus Zenfone AR that I have right here is powered with Tango. And this has been kind of a, a, I wouldn't say a big release, but a big release for Asus and for Project Tango, especially in the last few weeks. Uh, today, it's R Core or AR Core, Google's next step in bringing augmented reality to Android phones. Uh, this time, though, instead of bringing it only to the phones with specialized hardware like the Asus Zenfone AR, it's going to be supported by all Android phones running Android 7.0 Nougat and above. Google uh, showed off the new system in a limited preview today with a full launch that's expected sometime this winter. They say they have a goal of 100 million devices by winter. And they really, I mean, I feel like this was a necessity because, you know, they've been working on Tango for a couple of years and then Google and then Apple announces AR kit. And oh, by the way, all these iPhones, you know, <laughs> hundreds of millions of iPhones are going to support it you know, with a software update versus needing specialized hardware on a phone in order to do it. Google had to keep up pace. But I don't know, Jace, do you think that they were probably working on this well in advance of knowing about uh, Apple's Apple's thing? The Verge article that I read kind of kind of made it sound like eh, Google saw what Apple was doing. And so they had to do theirs as well. But I imagine they needed more lead time than that. I, I agree. I, I, th I think they've been working on it for, for some time. But I mean, uh, Google's an engineering company at heart, and they're really good at making really, really cool stuff. Uh, not as good as convincing the average user about why it's so cool. I mean, yeah. geeks understand why it's cool, and we get excited about it. Uh, whereas Apple's just you know, they can come up with something that uh, someone else has produced for a while and they call it revolutionary and everyone believes it. So, um, yeah, I, I think Google's been up to that for a while. Yeah. What do you think, Ron? Are you excited about what you're seeing here? Does does AR? I mean, does augmented reality excite you at all? Oh yeah, I, I mean, I love our augmented reality. I've been, I've been, I've been very pro augmented reality all the way back to Google Google goggles. Remember that? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, you know, I think that augmented reality is a great tool to, you know, that that when using existing hardware can show off what you know the kind of next phase of computing will be and that you know like i the microsoft hololens demos still to this, to this day and even you know live you know the stuff i've seen that you know has been beyond just the announcements and the demos show that like the the ability to add you know to augment your reality around you can be a real powerful thing for education for learning and even for gaming um i'm not surprised that this at, by this at all i mean I, I the i always thought the problem with tango was all the hardware right mm -hmm. we agreed like it was so limiting already from that like what was the application in order for it to go beyond that it would need to work just on any on or close to any phone um so you know whether or not apple beating them to the punch somewhat Although not really, but in public perception, you know, but with, you know, because Tango doesn't have the words AR in it or the letters AR in it, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, so, so, yeah, so the, the branding of AR Core, I, I do wonder if that isn't influenced by Apple's announcement with AR Kit or R Kit, as I call it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like R Core. I think we call it R Core. R -core. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I yeah. just, I just envision a bunch of people uh, in a mosh pit when I hear R Core. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, hardcore. <laughs> uh, it's got to suck to be a Seuss, right? You just release this phone with all the you know specialized hardware, differentiated, yeah. whatever, and then Google's like, oh, by the way, yeah, it's not so useful anymore. <laughs> like like yeah. two weeks later, they gave you the release. They gave you the two week release window, and they're like, all right, we we did you a favor there. Now here's the new th shiny thing that we're obsessed with. <laughs> well, what it, what excites me the most about about this is is particularly the third option that uh, the Verge talks about the light estimation mm -hmm. feature. So this allows the augmented reality to be, to be better integrated into your real reality. It looks like it actually belongs there, whereas the stuff we have right now it's it's a cool graphic just kind of pasted on on the image yep. in your phone, right? Um, and there's a lot of possibilities there. I mean, if you think just real estate alone, or if you go to Home Depot, I don't know if you guys have Home Depot in the US or not, but uh, if yeah. you go to Home oh, yeah. Depot and you look at a new dining room set or new drapes or something like that, you could be in your living room shopping there and say, hey, how would these drapes or how would this dining room set actually look in my house? Um, yep. That's something anyone can understand and anyone can use. But right now, when you have the AR, it just it looks so clearly out of place uh, from from what you're seeing. So it's cool and fun. 
for something like Pokemon Go, but for more practical applications, uh, it's still got a way to go. So that part really excites me. Yeah, it's, well, it's, yeah that, that's like yesterday, last week, Jason, with your with the with the thing that you brought to the arena with the dinosaurs, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Which you know it looked really cool, but every now and then they jittered or like you you could tell they're not there, right? It needs to be smooth and and it's got to bridge that gap between experimental and something that just works. Yeah, and what you're talking about, Jay, specifically, that, that first photo that you pulled up, Victor, was perfect where it was showing uh, from the blog, it was the photo. Well, and you can kind of see it there, too, casting little bits of shadows. But that one, see the shadow yeah. being cast from from the um, from the lion kind of in a, you know, in a sideways direction and in that photo specifically. That's kind of part of what that's all about, being able to analyze the scenario and cast a believable looking shadow so it integrates with the scene better than just, you know, a sprite placed on top of something and pinned to a specific place in in the area. We had Russell Hawley uh, from VR Heads um, on Tech News Today earlier, and we're talking about this with him. And one of my questions for him was, you know, obviously Project Tango has specific hardware. Google says it's not, it's not like abandoning Tango. It just sees Tango as more specialized, more almost like a more premium version of this, but for specialized use cases, whereas our, um, whereas our core is more for the masses. But, um, you know, the question came up with like, well, what does that enable? What is the difference between the two systems that that enables? And the big difference that he was able to illustrate is that Tango is really good at mapping, you know, you can go up the stairs, down the stairs, all throughout an entire building and map walls and see that wall and understand that something can't go beyond that wall. Whereas something like this is really good for in the room, but it's not going to know what to do with the wall. Well, um, and, that, and and that's, I, I, I see that as the difference between the hardcore tablet that a contractor or interior design a decorator buys in order to illustrate how they're going to decorate a room versus games where dinosaurs run across your couch. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, like it's, it's almost like enterprise versus consumer. Right. Yeah. That's hardcore, our core right there. That you're talking hardcore, about. our core. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. Good job, Jason. You've uh, been thinking that one up for a while. Uh, yeah, he said hardcore. And I was like, wait a minute. It sounds a lot like our core. Yes. <laughs> we go with that. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm excited. At the same time, I can say from my time with the Asus Zenfone AR, I said this earlier too, the whole holding your phone up and getting in on things and everything like that, that's cool for a little bit. You definitely hit a point to where your arms are tired. You definitely hit a point to where the effect is just kind of like, okay, I get it. And yep. you kind of want to move on. So there's not a lot of longevity to that experience. Pokemon Go, as simple as it was, got people to continue to go back to it time and time again. Its AR was very basic, but they figured out how to make the game fun so that you didn't mind holding up your phone and doing these things. I was playing a game called uh, Tower uh, Towers for Tango, and, you know, that's building a tower. It's like a tower simulator game. You place it on a table. You can get really get in there and see the different floors of your tower and everything. And it's really neat. But then at the same time, like after about 10 minutes, you're just you're sick of holding your phone out here and going over to the hospital and touching yeah. and coming back over here and everything. It just kind of gets tiring. It, you, it would yeah. be way better suited in a VR headset with that type of tracking or, you know, something like yeah. that. I think there's really an arms race in this kind of niche yeah. because Magic Leap, I know they have a bit of a checkered past, but Magic Leap has an AI solution with this. So um, they they want to uh, for you to be able to map your room or wherever you're doing and have the app learn how to map that space better each time you each time you do it. Right. Um, and so that that's their solution. But I also think that this this is going to blow up. My, my prediction is it's going to become massively mainstream and hugely exciting for the average user. Once we stop uh, looking through this, looking at this big AR world through these tiny little screens. So if that's some sort of, you know, uh, eye lens or uh, some sort of Google glass or something like that, that really gets our hands out of the way and, and opens it up. Mm -hmm. um, that's really a big game changer because right yeah. now through the phone, for the reasons you stated, it just gets tiresome pretty quickly. Yeah, and I and I agree with that. I was going to say, you know, the next step of this is a HoloLens esque access or Google Glass esque accessory, Jason, that that removes the need to hold the phone like that. That you see, you know, the stuff around you, and that that's what I think is going to be really, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, for some experiences, for that real immersive experience, like that's where I want to see Daydream and 
our core kind of combine. And uh, Russell Hawley, again, made a, a fantastic uh, kind of correlation between that idea and Google's already said they have a standalone VR headset that they're working on that we're going to see sometime. And you better believe it's going to be exactly that. It's going to be our core merged with with daydream to have an inside out tra trackable solution they've already got the hand controller and so it elevates the smartphone level of vr even further and lets you do things like tilt brush you know and and other things like that that would be really nice to have on the mobile side and also i mean aside from that then you take the more casual type of augmented reality which is you go into Lowe's and you and you're you're trying to find a particular aisle maybe Lowe's has as part of its app integrated with this not just with Project Tango anymore but in all Android phones running nougat the ability to go into like AR mode and it's like what are you looking for screwdrivers it knows where you are inside the store it says go up three aisles and you know the narrow points you around the corner then maybe holding up your phone that's actually very useful because that saved you time you know exactly where to yeah. go so uh, stuff to look forward to for sure. Uh, we'll see how, how big it gets. It's exciting. We're nearly in the future. It's one, I, I can't wait for this. <laughs> what happens um, when we get to the future, Ron? What then? The, I, 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 then, then the next thing. Then, then we're going to go live on Mars. I don't know. Even but, future -er? 